Love is a temporary madness. It erupts like volcanoes and then subsides. And when it subsides, you have to make a decision. You have to work out whether your root was so entwined together that it is inconceivable that you should ever part, because this is what love is. Love is not breathlessness, it is not excitement, it is not the promulgation of promises of eternal passion. That is just being in love, which any fool can do. Love itself is what is left over when being in love has burned away, and this is both an art and a fortunate accident. Those that truly love have roots that grow toward each other underground, and when all the pretty blossoms have fallen from their branches, they find that they are one tree and not two. Justine and Michael met by happenstance as is typical of true love. When I asked them both to describe how they met, it struck me how they both clearly noticed one another, but were nervous and apprehensive to speak to one another. They were getting on the same plane and as the universe will do, they ended up sitting near each other and struck up a conversation. Justine flew to Canada to visit a friend from high school and she flew back and she landed in San Jose and the next day I got a phone call and she said, Mom, I met someone. I said, okay, well, where did you meet someone? She said, on the airplane. I was like, seriously? You met someone on an airplane? And she said, yeah, I met this guy on an airplane. I was like, oh, okay. And my perfect son said that he would come visit me. So I was so excited, I got to San Jose Airport an hour and a half where his plane was supposed to arrive. I parked 50 feet from the door thinking I'm whisking him out of here, we're the first ones out of here. But fate intervened and we waited 40 minutes for his luggage which didn't come off the plane. But this pretty little girl came up to him and gave him her number in that time. So thank you Air Canada for lost luggage. <laughs> We'll be forever grateful for that, or we would have been long, long gone. <laughs> Since that day, I've seen how happy you've made her, Michael, and I'm really grateful for that. This is something that I know Justine always dreamed of, and she deserved more than anything. And the fact that she gets that, and with somebody who's as wonderful as you are, who appreciates her so much, just seeing you guys today during the ceremony and how clearly devoted you both are to each other, I couldn't ask for any, any better for my sister. I, Michael, vow to help you love life. To always hold you with tenderness. And to have the patience that love demands. To speak when words are needed. And to share the silence when they are not. To live within the warmth of your heart. <sighs> and always call it home. Their relationship began on that trip, meeting by chance. seemed like a nice girl. I dropped him off close to where she lived a couple days later so they could meet for coffee. Went home, held my phone, paced around like he was a 16 year old thinking, seems nice but she could be a drug crazed California psycho, I don't know. <laughs> Michael back to the plane a couple days later and I'm bawling at the airport and my husband said, I don't know why you're crying, he's going to marry her and be back here before you know it. Four or five weeks later, Justine says, I'm flying up to Canada to visit Michael. And I'm like, you don't really know this guy. She said, it's going to be fine, Mom. I said, where are you staying? I'm staying with him. I said, you don't know this guy. Justine flies up there, and I said, you have to call me when you get there. I have to know that you're, you know, okay and that everything seems like normal. So she calls me when she gets to his appointment, and she says, I'm here. And I said, okay, is everything all right? She goes, yeah, it seems pretty normal. I said, there aren't any body parts in the freezer? And in the background, I hear, did chicken thighs count? He brought Justine home to us, and we met for lunch the first time I met her. And I came home after that and said to the dean, I said, you know, 
he found a young lady that's got a head on her shoulder. A few things that every person needs in their marriage early on to survive it. The first thing is a good set of earplugs, a hard hat, a portable first aid kit. I have a highly visible vest that when you're directing traffic, you get to wear this. You know, this has been a spectacular evening. About, almost about this time we went to Hawaii to celebrate my birthday and the two of them took a hike to the top of Haleakala to see the sunset and they came in and I said, how was the sunset? And Michael said, oh, the sunset was awesome. And Justine said, and then there was this. Um, I hope that this is the first day of a beautiful, adventurous love story. I hope this is page one of a very happily ever after. I hope every day you fall more deeply in love. I hope every passing breath your bond gets stronger and happier and you're always this complaining. All of the things that I could imagine for you, this is the best story ever. Best story ever. And you are the best person I can think of to add to the story. It kind of just kind of puts things in perspective that you think how something as random as that could lead to us being here and experiencing this and how, how special that is.